as sanjay rightly said about the uh, difficulties one can face when you are treating the bony uh, problems around the shoulder joint especially the bony bank cards and this problems can be sometimes so difficult to achieve that uh, even a good surgeon the master surgeon can have a nightmare while treating the bony bank cards so bony bank cards are the one which needs a careful attention and due respect so arthroscopic bony bank card repair especially uh, has been uh, the toast since last uh, 10 years especially after dr sugaya has published his first paper on bony bank card repair and this repair has been more advanced with the good anchors the additional suture materials the good high tension suture material and sometimes if the bony chunk is very great or good good amount of bony chunk one can fix it with cannulated screws so what are we looking at looking at the glenoid morphology which can be normal abnormal according to me is a bony bank cut or it could be erosive in such situations it's very difficult to address the issue because the bony instability around the shoulder joint is difficult to address and if you have the bony instability which is associated with loss of anterior glenoid rim then you have you are going to have a recurrent instability around the shoulder joint so when you are looking at the bony bank cut as such as you can see in this picture and this needs to be corrected as soon as possible so that there can be an attritional and erosive uh, uh, wear around the glenoid so this uh, three types of bony bank cards are commonly what we see is the bony instability around the shoulder joint and third the second most is the repetitive erosion around the glenoid this can lead to the bony instability around the shoulder joint so glenoid defects can be variedly described as erosion type that is the erosion of anterior rim because of repetitive micro trauma or repetitive subluxation or dislocation around the shoulder joint or it could be the fragment type which is a direct impact or injury on the glenoid which can lead to the injury or the uh, uh, the defect on the anterior glenoid rim and this needs to be recalculated to analyze the amount of bone loss on each side so once you understand the amount of bone loss on the glenoid side it's very difficult to address as dr abhay uh, no dr ashish babulkar has said in morning steve burkhard and jody bear are the one who described this inverted pear shaped type of glenoid and this inverted pear shaped type of glenoid is because the uh, this inferior margin which is supposed to be the circle of the glenoid the full circle it is it has lost some amount of surface area which is very important to develop a good good compression concavity uh, effect on the shoulder joint because that is the more stabilizing effect uh, for, for the shoulder joint so this is a rare scenario but sometimes one has to face this and in these situations you cannot do the arthroscopic bank card repair and they will require some kind of latage type of procedure especially this kind of procedures where you have a defect glenoid defect where the fragment is retained one can do an arthroscopic bank card repair with the help of suture anchors so one has to understand the subcritical bone loss which has been described by shasha in the agsm and one can define this as between 13% to 20% of glenoid defect and the recurrence rate is absolutely associated with the amount of bone loss which is lost from the glenoid anterior rim so bony bank cut repair could be a chronic anterior rim fracture which is seen in almost 40% of the cases or it could be a erosive uh, type of uh, ligament uh, uh, the bony defect which could be associated with the fragment connected being connected to the ligament so if you have a fragment which is connected to the ligament one can fix it and create a good bank cut repair along with bone incorporation onto the ligament it can be incorporated as a fragment as a real time bank cut repair it is a less invasive and the most anatomical way of reconstructing the bony bank card repair so what is the prerequisite the most important prerequisite is 3d evaluation uh, ct scan evaluation of the shoulder joint so as to analyze the humeral head and uh, the, the the humeral head bone loss that is hill sacs lesion as well as the glenoid uh, bone loss uh, the bone loss this has been very well described by uh, ig toy steve burkhart and the Giovanni group where they described uh, something known as on track and off track lesion so once you have off track lesion it is very difficult to uh, create uh, some kind of arthroscopic repair and one has to go ahead with latage type of procedure so extensive uh, complex release is required whenever you want to um, mobilize that fragment back to the glenoid and one can repair the labrum first once you repair the labrum first whole, whole uh, glenoid fragment can be pulled up 
one has to penetrate this fragment with the help of bone teacher which is commercially available which is designed by dr hiro sugaya from japan and this bone teacher can easily penetrate the bone bone fragment and can give you a very good hold onto the bone fragment so how do you analyze the bone loss the analysis of bone loss can be easily done by using two techniques as described by dr sugaya himself that is a circle method where you have to describe the loss of diameter which is the tangential diameter with respect to the uh, longitudinal axis of the glenoid where you can analyze the amount of bone loss by the loss of diameter or second could be a loss of surface area as described by this where you have fractures and eventually you have to uh, analyze amount of bone loss on the glenoid surface area so once you have fragment go around it like this if you have a very small fragment you can go around it or you can penetrate that fragment with the help of the strong st uh, bone stitches like this you can see in this uh, x rays so this is a bone stitcher which has been uh, designed by dr hiro sugaya or you can use a spectrum type of hook or some hooks which are very stronger and they can easily penetrate the bone so let's uh, see a case where you can see here the bone loss the uh, bony fragment is on the neck of the glenoid it is almost retracted down and this is a complete capsule which is you can see here and this can be easily repaired with the help of uh, the uh, 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 now with the help of suture anchor which can be placed onto the surface of the glenoid or neck of the glenoid and you can pull it back onto the surface the arthroscopic bony bank cut repair as you can see here you have to recreate dr sanjay desai has already told you how to recreate the bed for the uh, the uh, glenoid labrum and once you create a bed for the glenoid labrum you can place the, your anchor onto the glenoid labrum and so as to pull here the most important part is creating an inferior labral repair first as you do it in normal bony bank cut here here also you have to do it in bony bank cut you take the bony bank uh, uh, put your anchors first and then create a labral repair so as to create an hammock so first you repair the hammock leaving this bony piece as it is and then in second anchor you can place your uh, second anchor and push your bony labrum here and this can be easily fixed with the help of a stitcher here there is a very strong stitcher which has been uh, marketed by dr hiro sugaya this is a bone stitcher and you, through which you can pass this can penetrate the bony fragment directly into the glenoid and once you fix it it will give add to the stability in front of glenoid so once you do that it is a complete repair of glenoid or labrum onto the in a glenoid surface so this is your completed repair this is a this is how it will look this is a pre op this is post op and once you repair this will add to the stability of glenoid and achieve a good uh, compression concavity uh, cohesive forces in, into the glenohumeral joint so clinical outcome of this technique has been very well published by kitayama and sugayo and they found out that uh, especially when you have bone loss less than 15% you can have good effect of this surgery you can have a very well result uh, good results but they had some type of complications with regards to the uh, available bone loss they found out that whenever the defect is almost between 15 to 26% they have almost 20% of failure rate when you are doing this kind of surgery in associated high amount of bone loss and when your bone uh, augmentation is less required you have very you have very good results as regards to these both techniques even shaha in his paper has published that around 15 to 30% of bone loss is a amount of bone loss which can be repaired with the help of bony bank cut repair but beyond that you can lead to, lead, lead to a recurrent instability of the shoulder joint so real bone loss which can be repaired in all this procedure by doing bony bank cuts is somewhere around 17.5% in sugaya's results they found out there is one patient who experienced a recurrence lizard which is very difficult to believe only 2.6% recurrence rate as regard to shaha who has got almost 13% of recurrence rate so early stage failure is known and the augmentation is the best whenever required and necessary as regard to shaha when they looked after their 73 patients who underwent arthroscopic bony bank cut repair 12% had a recurrence rate and defect as low as 13.5% of defect they have associated with poor results so this is one case which was done here this is a bony bank cut this is a inferior bony bank cut and this is a post op x ray where we have done a, a repair with the help of inferior anchor and superior anchor taking into the consideration of bony repair so for bony bank cut lesion one has to have associated good amount of bone loss 
the fragment which becomes smaller over the time and this can lead to a, a good resorption of the bone fragment it's very difficult to penetrate this kind of fragment in such situation one can create something known as double pulley technique and they can pull this fragment onto the glenoid surface once you reconstruct this fragment you can achieve a good amount of bone loss and excellent fragment reduction can be achieved as demonstrated by Chin Yan Jian from China. So increase in amount of bone loss, bone volume is noted whenever you do a bony bank art repair and this can be easily achieved by doing a total repair. As regards to Antonio Romeo group which are described this total repair where they have completely and entirely IGHL has been fixed and uh, uh, is been repaired onto the glenoid with the help of suture anchor and they found out if they take, do retensioning of the IGHL it can lead to a good stability of shoulder joint. A double pulley Erosion. technique which has been described last yeah. slides. So double uh, double pulley technique which has been described here whenever you have a bony bank art lesion you can do a medial uh, anchor which is plus here and then you can take a suture and with a lateral not, not less anchor you can fix it onto the glenoid. So this is one case we have done a double pulley technique we have done it and this is anchor which has been placed on medial side and uh, the, the surface anchor has been placed with a not less anchor. So this is a follow. So at last there is an algorithm which is available for bony bank art lesion and the algorithm is whenever you have more than 20% bone loss one has to analyze if it is associated with the amount of bone fragment retained. If it is between 1% to 5% one can easily go ahead with the fixation of the fragment. If it is less than 1% then one has to have a bone grafting type of procedure like Latagette procedure. Thank you very much.